the Mass has been a most beautiful way to uh, begin the, the process for the uh, beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Fra Andrew Berti. He was a very uh, simple man in his faith in the best sense of the word, childlike. Uh, he was very devoted, for instance, to the, to the rosary, uh, to the liturgy of the hours, which he as a professed uh, knight would have been praying every day. He took his poverty, chastity and obedience extremely seriously before he became Grand Master, when he became Grand Master and until he died. Notwithstanding the fact that he was a very erudite man, he came from nobility. We use that phrase oftentimes, noblesse oblige, that, that nobility obliges us to be something more and calls us to be something more in society, not in a haughty way or in a, in a condescending way, but simply recognizing that God has given us uh, or given to me if I am a noble, which I'm not, but if I were a noble, God has given me certain gifts which I'm called to use in his service and the service of, of my neighbor. We try to respect the vow of poverty by not causing scandal. In other words, if we have to buy a car because it's necessary to get around from one place to another to live our normal lives, even though professed knights of the, knights of the order, uh, we are encouraged not to buy Rolls Royce, <laughs> but, but to buy a car which doesn't attract too much attention. The same with our clothes, the same with our way of life. There was a sanctity in the man which he transmitted to the members of the order and gave them from his presence, not even from his words, that vitality, that willingness to follow the charisma of the order. In other words, to testify the faith and to help the needy. Certainly he was uh, very uh, deeply involved in promoting the uh, fidelity to, to Catholic doctrine, that he had a very strong sense of the uh, that the knights, even though they're a sovereign order, uh, receive their sovereignty through their communion in the Catholic Church, through their obedience to the, to the Roman pontiff and their fidelity to, to Catholic teaching and discipline. I'm hoping that in time to come, and especially through the cause of, of Fra Andrew, that that aspect of the, uh, of the Order of Malta will also receive a greater highlight and surely that's needed in our time in which so many, there's confusion about so many fundamental truths about human life and the, and the family. Uh, the Knights of Malta, I believe, can be a very powerful witness, also by the very fact that they do all of these works of charity. And the two things go together. I think there's a tendency to think that, uh, oh, well, you can be charitable and, and not uh, uh, worry about uh, the truths of the faith, but our faith teaches us that we can only be charitable if we're also uh, defending the truth and holding to it so that our charity is really Christ-like. <laughs>